Hey everyone, in this video we're going to create and deploy the default Django app to DigitalOcean's app platform. So first, let's go ahead and install a couple of things that we need for Django. So we need to install Django, but in this app we're also going to connect it to a Postgres dev database that DigitalOcean offers. So we're going to need to install PSYCOPG2-binary to install the libraries necessary for working with Postgres. And now that we have those installed, let's go ahead and do a Django-admin start project, and we're going to call it app underscore platform. So now if we go in here, we have your typical Django site. And now we're going to create an app using the Django admin start app, merely called app. Before we move forward, we're going to have to make a couple of changes to our app so that it can run an app platform. All of these will happen inside of our settings file. So the first thing we need to do is modify our settings.py file and remove the secret key. We do not want this being stored in plain text in our GitHub repository where everyone can see it. So what we're going to do is we are going to allow the user to specify the Django secret key as an environment variable if they want to whenever they launch the app. Or what we can also do is we can use the get random secret key function that is supplied by Django. Now to do this, we will need to import this and we import this from django.core.management.utils import get random secret key. So the next thing we want to do is we want to give the user the ability to toggle debug mode via an environment variable so they don't have to constantly make Git ch GitHub changes every single time they want to go from debug to non-debug mode. So we're going to go ahead and do os.getinv debug and we're going to default this to false. So if someone forgets to set this environment variable, we're going to set it to false just to be on the safe side. And then we're going to a double equal true here to evaluate it. Now you may be wondering why we're doing this as strings. This is because the environment variable will come through as a string. So we want the person to input it as a normal, what you would expect to be a normal Python variable with an uppercase false and an uppercase true. But because that's going to come in as a string, we have to do this little bit of extra uh, evaluation to make sure that we actually get the results that we're expecting. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to modify our allowed hosts so that we can actually access our app whenever we're running it in the app platform. So again, we're going to do this through an environment variable and we're going to do os.getinv django allowed hosts. And if that is specified, then it will take what is ever in there and use it. Otherwise, we know that we're in a development mode and we want to use our typical uh, 127.0.0.1 and localhost settings so we can do uh, development. And we're going to split these by a comma because this, is a, this could be a list of multiple things. So the next thing we need to configure is our database. So what we're going to do is we're going to once again check our environment variables os.getenv database URL and then if this is not anything there then it'll be empty quotes does not equal empty quotes if this is valid then we want to take this database URL which is a database URL connection string from our Postgres database and use URL parse to parse it URL parse os.environ.get database URL and then if this is valid and we've parsed it out, then we need to update our settings to use this information. So the default connection. And now we need to specify the settings. So the engine will be django.db.backends.com postgresql underscore psycopg2 the name will come from our path dot relative path r dot path
user will be set to r.username. Password will be set to r.password. Host will be set to r.hostname. Port will be set to r.port. And DigitalOcean requires that you we set our SSL mode to true to ensure encrypted connection to our database. Sorry, set it to require. And that is that. And then if we do not detect this, then we can simply just fall back to our SQLite database. And then finally, uh, whenever you deploy your Django app, it will automatically attempt to collect all of the static files for you. So we do need to set a static root. And we can set this to os.path.join to the base directory. And we can, we'll just call this directory static files. We need to import OS. We also need to import URL lib dot parse, import URL parse. So before we go forward, let's go ahead and test and make sure that our app runs. So it does say that we need to do migrations, but our app does run. And if we go to localhost port 8000, we will see that our app is indeed running on localhost 8000. So that means that this app is now ready to deploy to DigitalOcean's app platform. So now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and add this code to a GitHub repository. We're going to just call this app platform. And we're going to call this my Django app. We're going to go ahead and create the repository and it gives us the standard GitHub instructions for adding this to a GitHub repository. So we're going to go ahead and do a git init and then we're going to do a git status and see what is available. So we do have some things here that we don't want going in like our uh, SQLite three database. So let's go ahead and open up a git ignore. And let's go ahead and do db.sqlite3 and let's go ahead and exclude PYC files from this. Now let's go ahead and add our app. Go ahead and commit it. Now we can go ahead and add our main branch. Now we do the git remote add origin git at github.com colon your username then slash app dash platform dot git git push dash u origin main and now if we come back to our github site we will see that our app is here and ready to go We need to do a few more things before we can deploy our app to app platform. So what we need to do first is install G unicorn because we are going to deploy our app on app platform using it. And now that we have that, we need to now freeze our packages and output them to a requirements.txt file. So that way we are able to install all the packages we need when it's time to install our app. Now, we, all we need to do is we need to do the typical git add dance where we add the requirements to our GitHub repository. And now we can push our app. And now our requirements with GUnicorn are added to our app. So now let's deploy our app to app platform. First, we go over here and we click create app. And we need to configure our GitHub permissions so that way we can actually deploy our app. So we click on configure GitHub permissions and then your GitHub username. 
and you will go ahead and select which individual repositories you wish to be able to deploy. You can select all repositories if you want, but I tend to do individual repositories. So we go ahead and select app platform and click save. And now we can select our app platform app and get ready to deploy it. We're going to go ahead and deploy this into the New York data center and deploy our main branch and we're going to auto deploy code on every code change that is pushed to our main branch. Now, App Platform has detected that this is a Python web service, which is good, and it has detected that we are using GUnicorn to run this. We will need to edit this run command really quick because this is only a partial run command. We will now need the name of our project, which is App Platform, and we will need the WSGI file. If you are familiar with GUnicorn, this is a typical GUnicorn deployment style. So we go ahead and close that. And now we need to add all of those environment variables that we had whenever we were setting up our settings. So for this sake, we're going to set debug equal to true. We're just going to let the Django secret key automatically generate itself. We're going to add our allow Django allowed hosts. And we're going to use these special environment variables that DigitalOcean makes available to us. Uh, which are basically called bindable variables. And this allows us to get information from App Platform from our different components to make it easier for us to deploy. So we're going to use our app domain variable, and this will be basically the default at domain name of our app that DigitalOcean will give you. So that way we can access our app using that without having to set up a custom DNS record. Next, we're gonna set up database URL because we're going to use, we're going to soon add a Postgres database to this app. So we're going to call that database DB and we're going to call it and the bindable variable is database URL. And now we come down here and say, select add a database and we're going to select a dev database of Postgres and it's going to be name will be DB. So we click add to the database. And last week we look over all of our stuff to make sure that it is set the way we want it to. And we click next. We get our final screen that tells us how much our application is going to cost us to run. And then we launch our application. So after that wait, now we click on this link right here, which is the default name for our app. And we can see that the Django process is running and the Django web page is displayed for us. But this does not mean that we are done. Next, we need to go into the console area over here and perform the necessary Django tasks that are needed to get our database up and running. Now this, this console process launches us into the same area where our code is. So we can run python manage.py migrate to perform our initial database migrations. And now if we run python manage.py create super user, my username will be Sammy sammy at do.co and after we've created our super user your django app will be ready to go